right, back at the bench here again. You know, I've seen this done. Some guys do it without even bothering removing this old finish. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and degrease. This is just some ac acetone here, acetone. Oops. So we're gonna degrease the outside <clears throat> and then bead blast the outside of this. <clears throat> Um, I'll degrease it one more time after it's blasted, but, uh, so I got to plug the bore and blast it and degrease it. And this, <coughs> excuse me, the barrel, the freshly machined part, again, we're just going to, uh, degrease it with some ace tone. The grease does not like epoxy and epoxy does not like grease. They just do not get along. Okay. I'll let this end soak a little bit. You know what? Like oil seeping back in there. Here's that. And since he doesn't want this refinished, I got to be real careful not to remove any of this patina <laughs> on the outside. Okay, so I'll set that there, let that dry. Um, it's already been washed. So yeah, um, I guess there's really no way to show bead blasting, so I'll just do that real quick. Uh, again, we're I'm just gonna blast this off till it's fresh steel and then uh, re I'll get some gloves on and re-degrease, and then we'll get the bedding prepared and smear it on there and shove it in there and let it cure. So, be right back. I have the liner prepared. Um, I went in and took a triangular file and just uh, roughed the heck out of the outside of this liner. I've got the end plugged up. So th this is the end I'm gonna be feeding through the, bar the existing barrel. Um, so I don't want any um, epoxy getting into the bore. So that's what that's for. Uh, the barrel has been thoroughly degreased. <clears throat> and uh, obviously I've bead blasted the snot out of the outside of this. So everything should be completely degreased and ready for the epoxy. Uh, I know yesterday I mentioned using Acroglass. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm gonna, I think JB Weld's probably gonna be a better option for this. It's a stronger bond, higher temperature, and uh, just better overall, better all around. That's what I use for the sleeves and the filler rings for when I do M16 extractions and things like that. And never had anything pop off or come off on me. Whereas the the acro glass, it's you know, it's plastic, more or less. I think this is actually steel, or at least has steel elements in it. So we're gonna go with the JB Weld. Um, Either way, I don't think it's going to matter all that much, but still. Um, so, yeah, as I said, everything's been thoroughly degreased. So I'm just going to do one more test fit here just to make sure there's no surprises here, especially with the file marks I put on the outside. So it is it is a little snugger, but still able to be pushed through. Yeah, it's quite a bit snugger. So, um, I think I'll just push this through a few times, knock off the whatever. Yeah, so I think it just burrs from the file. That's better. And 
buffing it up again, so that's cool. Oh, also, I uh, kind of slightly chamfered the very end of it so that just to help help guide it through. I don't think it's going to need that, but you, you know, once you get JB Weld on stuff and start assembling parts, <laughs> sometimes there's no going back. Okay, so I think all I got to do now is mix up the uh, the JB and push it on in and let it cure. So uh, let's get to let's get to mixing. Just use more than I think I'm gonna need. It's cheap enough. <clears throat> it's just a one to one ratio. The other nice thing about JB is it's actually kind of already colored like the metal is. Whereas that acro glass is just kind of a pale, pale yellowy gross color, unless you put dye in it. It's got a long working time, but I still want to hustle here. Take a glob and just kind of All right, and then just use the Kind of working. Of course, most of this is just going to spill out as I try to feed it through the barrel. So, probably the majority of this is going to end up back on this piece of paper here. Sorry if I'm not out of frame either, or two, but... Trust me, this liner is not bent. It's my chuck, my drill. It's the drill chuck that's all candy wampus here. All right, I should probably get this in the barrel sooner than later. Yeah. All right, that's good. I'm sure, that's plenty. All right. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Let's get this going. Uh, let's get a catch pan for the drippings. Okay. Yeah, that's wiping most of it off. Okay, that end's sticking out. Good. Oh, we got a big glob here. Oh my. Okay, I got a bit of cleanup to do here, obviously. Now the very face, this end, will be machined back. Um, back to... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try to say dimension. So, not too worried about that. I'm gonna get most of it off, but I obviously need it out of that extraction groove. Uh, but for now, I want to try to maybe uh, push it through a little more and then uh, slather it. Same thing here, same concept. Just to make sure we got a good, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, no gaps, filling all the gaps visually. JB doesn't tend to expand <laughs> as it cures, but I just wanna make sure there's nothing there. So I'm just kind of smooshing it in. 
I mean, there's really no visual gap anyway, but. Preparation is key with this stuff. So I think I'll get some uh, Q-tips out and do some fine, fine detail cleaning here. I really want to get it off the, the breech end. Don't need that screwing us up later on. Got it all out of the threads and the extractor groove. Make sure I'm not getting it on myself here. So yeah, the threads are good and clean. So, so breech end is good. There's nothing left on the exterior. Okay, so let's clean up the muzzle end. Obviously, don't want all that there. Now this one, I'm not gonna clean up so much because like I said, I want that, the junction there to be completely sealed. So if a guy looks at this, it's gonna be real hard to tell it's got a liner in it. But <clears throat> it's cleaned off the exterior, that little cross pin. The mag tube cleaned out. And then I'm gonna leave the stuff that's up there. Um, again, because I'm just gonna, I'm gonna clean all that up. I'm gonna face it all, I'll, I'll chop this off and then face it, <clears throat> excuse me, face it, machine it to the uh, cut just under that to give it a fresh crown. And like I said, a little bit of a recess probably. And uh, do a couple tricks to maybe hide the fact that this has got a liner in it. Okay, I was gonna po uh, poke the bore out just to make sure because I don't need that that plug anymore. Uh, that's uh, not necessary. The JB is not gonna just kind of creep back in there. But uh, this will make sure there's nothing in there, in that bore. And there it goes. Just to have a look. So now there's no JB on that. None on the patch, it's just a little dirt from the barrel. <clears throat> okay, so that's all for now. That will look. Yeah, that's a shiny clean bore. Barrel. Barrel bore. Wow. Nice. Cool. So we'll let this cure 24 hours and then come back and remachine everything back down to spec. So I'll definitely be back tomorrow with that update. It's the next day and everything's looking real nice. Like it, uh, it cured very nicely. The JB weld is hard. Um, both ends are good and sealed up tight. So yeah, this turned out well. And I just, uh, you know, that's, uh, yeah, very solid. <laughs> so the next step to do now is uh, get this in the lathe, be slicing this off uh, a little bit uh, with a little bit left to machine down to the uh, original breech face surface. Um, and then uh, just get a chambering reamer. Uh, here's our chambering reamer. 2520 Winchester finishing reamer with a live pilot and a nice uh, TICN coating there for long life. Long tool life. Uh, we've got some test fire rounds here provided by the customer. So, good old 2520s. So, that, uh, some headspace gauges. I don't think I'm gonna need these because uh, there's actually no rim cut on there. All it is is a flat breech with no recess for the rim. So it's basically 
Uh, feed this in till the chamber's cut again. Good, that fits. Um, but yeah, we'll be getting into it right a bit, right till about there. Because there's the rim, so we're not going to be cutting that again. But anyway, uh, that's for a different job. So yeah, let's uh, let's get this in the machine and do some machining. This in the truck carefully. Let's get this roughly centered. very important not to cut more of the original breech face off. We don't want to do that. So we'll just put a thick layer of die cam on there. Let that dry. I'm going to recenter. I'm going to measure from here to the breech face. So I know roughly where I'm going. Uh, so yeah, let's get this actually centered perfectly because now we've got enough of the true bore to work with. All that stuff sticking out before, I mean, that's all rough. That doesn't count. Um, and now we can actually measure where that chamber is gonna be inside this barrel. Measure as in centering, centering off the true bore. <clears throat> <Oop. laughs> so, yeah, see, so we're a little bit off there. So low, high, go to the low, loosen, high, tighten. High, high, low, low, high, high. This one just did. And if you've been watching my videos to this point, you know I like to center off the low, the low kick uh, of that. Let me get this out before I forget. It's always in the freaking way in terms of you seeing what I'm doing here. <clears throat> This is not instructional, this is promotional. I want you guys to see what, what <clears throat> entails these jobs and why they cost some money. It's not just sticking in a three-jot chuck and going to town on things. I'm just trying to get a reference point here. And zero is a good point, so looking, looking good there. Going in as deep as we can. Just a minor adjustment. Low, low, high is coming up here, high. And here's high. And good. Looking good, okay. And the outside of the barrel, it looks pretty good too. Looks like that hole was drilled pretty dang center. All right, so. Happy with that. Uh, let's spin it. Let's see what it looks like through the bore. Yeah, it's a little wobbly out there, but right up here is fine. Okay. Next, I was going to measure from there to the original breech face and just kind of set up a my tra travel indicator, my analog readout. Okay, let's see what we got here. 
43, 40, yeah, 43. Tough measuring this sometimes. 43 thousandths. So 43 thousandths to cut. We'll just say 40, stay on the safe side. So we'll come up, clean off my cutter. Come up and just touch this. And then I don't think you can see, but this is gonna be sitting on my, on the ways of the bed. And then this part measures travel of the uh, carriage. Analog readout. And I said 43, so we'll go to 40 on my dial and should be fine to zero and then we'll have a few thousands just to cut uh just to clean up with all right so just gonna do this manually it's very little material to cut so without any further ado let's do it let's just take five thousands here Kind of see where we're at. This will be 15. Just to ensure that nothing has moved, I'm going to remeasure real quick, like. I put my <clears throat> nineteen thousand. Man, maybe twenty. Which, yep, pretty much following our read out there. All right, ten. Five. All right, now we're gonna go real slow. Go down and take two thousands here. Two thousands. One thousands. Should have plenty left. Okay, so we'll go to zero here, which should still leave about three. Zero. Okay, now we're gonna go negative one. Negative one. See what happens, or we'll see where we're at. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it just wisped, just wisped the. Yep. So that right there, right where the extractor grooves cut, it just wisped that surface, and it feels fairly flush. Just a just a touch proud. Now what's going to happen? This is probably going to clean up and cut. I'm guessing this side of the of the breach. Because the barrel is never perfectly concentric with the bore, plus we've got a brand new bore that was drilled out. So I want to get this flush, but I'm I'm almost certainly going to cut a little bit of that original breach, which is fine. There's tolerance here. Okay. So let's go one thousandth more in I'm gonna lock the carriage and take the cut yeah you can hear it rubbing it's not really lifting a chip one more thousand maybe a half yeah this is a little, a little bit over a half thousands here OK, 
Okay. Before we get too crazy, let's check it. Take a good guy. Yeah, basically the same. So just cut a little more there. And we're still just a tiny bit proud. All right, let's take another thousands. And this is tracking almost perfectly. I, la I tried to leave about three thousandths. Fudge factor. Do a cleanup pass. Half thousandths. Cleanup pass, hopefully. Okay, I saw chips come off of the breach of the new liner, but not the breach face, not the original breach face. Okay. Yep, now we're flush. That's it. There's no step there at all. Totally flush. Okay, so let's just... Uh, a little different angle here. Yeah, that's that's it. So we're back to the original surface. Back this all off. So I'm not going to cut any more there. Um, I am going to just slightly polish a little bit. Kind of try to blend that in just a just a touch more. <coughs> This is very fine grit sandpaper. All I'm doing is cutting off the, or obviously the bluing's gone, but I just want to try to try to polish this in a little bit. And then, you know, most of this is going to be cut away with the reamer too. Not a whole lot you can do about that. All right, that's probably plenty. Again, we don't want to shorten this surface. Sure, I took off a few tenths, maybe a millionth or something, but. See, there's, there's some of a pitting in the original breach face there too still. Okay, so. <sighs> That's good. Um, but yeah, there's the liner remachined back to the surface. And that's just some um, pitting that was already there, existing pitting. But it is flush. Okay, <clears throat> I've got the reamer installed, my reamer holder. Um, what was I gonna say? <clears throat> it's lined up to the bore. Um, I recentered. There were actually I checked and it did not move. There's there's no uh, change in the uh, bore. Uh, so we're running dead true there. <clears throat> uh, it's just a matter of feeding this reamer into or to depth of the new chamber. Uh, so yeah, no uh, special things going on here. It's just a matter of cutting that chamber to depth. There we go. Okay, don't need that lock on. All right, let's go. Yeah, we're just starting to just starting the uh, 
throat area. Nice chips coming off, that's good. Normally with the with a chamber, I'm gonna pre-drill. This one is small and uh, slightly different than I'm used to doing. It's, you know, rimmed cartridge and this and that. Okay, that's enough. Let's pull out to check. Yep, that looks nice. No chatter going on. Okay. Just ream in a chamber. Slow and steady. Feel for chatter, nothing. This feels very smooth. Sounds good. Being extra conservative here with everything. All right, let's check it, clean it. Yep. Looking like a chamber starting to form. No. The starting of a chamber. <clears throat> All right. So now we're getting into the neck and shoulder junction area. I bumped the reamer when I blew it off that last time, so just be a little extra careful going in. Holder works good, it just you bump it. Doesn't like that. Neither do I. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've chambered a barrel without pre-drilling, so this is Like I said, a little different. Precision rifle, I pre-drill and then bore out with a precision boring bar and all that good stuff. So don't have this much material to cut <clears throat> initially. Uh, but this is how, well, a lot of people still do it. They, especially if you got a flush coolant system. Probably be done by now. But those make a huge mess and stink and um, just don't really need that right now. Yeah, now that we're into the, getting into the body of the cartridge, um, it's gonna be less, more frequent cleaning. These chips need a place to go. And see, once they get in, I don't know if, you probably can't see the reamer, but at least back here, but you know, it's getting loaded up pretty good. And so, you know, you're starting to compress and then they start scratching the crap out of the chamber or can. 
which you definitely don't want. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, nice finish in there. So that's all good. Six inch rule is a uh, 20 thousandths thick. So let's see how far off we are here. So it is capturing that ruler and we're at 25, 29. So we're about sixteen thousandths away. Five. Yep. About sixteen thousands. All right, so I'll set up my travel indicator here on the tailstock or on the quill. Watch so I can see how I'm feeding in, and then maybe set this to what did I say? Sixteen. Let's set it to thirteen. Right there. Okay. Alright, so just put a little here to ensure. Okay, this may be the last pass. Set it 13 thousandths off. Sharp eye on that breach face. So we're going to go to zero. Should leave a few thousandths. Just wisping it. Yep, there it is. So I think that's it. You see, just barely whisk the uh, breech face with the rim. So that should be good. It could have been a chip between there, but I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so I'm glad I stopped there. It, it was just the outside and over here it did not. So I didn't shorten that by any measurable amount. If this goes in all the way, we know it's, it's deep enough. And it does. Okay, that's it. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Goes all the way in. Lines up with the reamer. 
so now, now we just gotta polish this a little bit. I might. Chan for just break that edge, just barely. Uh, cause it is sharp. And, yep, looks like we're gonna have to recut that extractor out. That little groove. Right there, I reckon. But uh, for now, I'm gonna get a tool in here to just whisk the sharp edge off of that uh, breach, really machine breach. <laughs> Take much, just break that in. There, just contact. Yep, I think that's probably good. That's what's up. Thank you. Okay. It's pretty good to me. 